Warning, this video contains documentary footage of the Holocaust and of the 1993 film Schindler's List. Some viewers might find this extremely graphic and disturbing. This video was created for educational purposes only. In the face of such unimaginable evil like the Holocaust, how does one manage to make a true connection with the victims? To understand the scope of this event, one must attempt to separate the victims from mere numbers. More than six million Jews were slaughtered, and while there are museums, books, and pictures to educate people, this fact is incredibly difficult to grasp emotionally. Steven Spielberg changed statistics for faces and names, characters we could get to know and understand. Shalomon. In this way, he ensured that viewers would make a personal connection with the characters on screen, to feel their fear and pain. His goal was to tell a story everyone could relate to, in a way no one could ignore. The way to do this was to force the viewer to confront this horror on a personal level. To realize that every victim had a story, loved ones, and a life. Spielberg realized that looking at the Jews of the Holocaust simply as a group is just another way to take their humanity once more. In Schindler's List, the victim regains a sense of individuality and uniqueness. Most directors can deliver a history lesson, but it takes a great one to portray what just might be the worst atrocity ever committed in human history in a truthful and emotional fashion. Today, we'll explore the techniques used to make Schindler's List a personal, relatable story, and how a director that was known for directing blockbusters managed to make one of the most heartfelt films of all time. The list is an absolute good. The list is life. The film opens with the lighting of a candle, illuminating the Hebrew prayers reciting thousands of years of culture. The candle burns steadily throughout, and as the prayer diminishes, the candle fades, and so does all color. The screen turns to gray, their culture and their people go up in smoke. There is no light left. The gray of the Holocaust begins. A director's choice to shoot in black and white may run the risk of seeming to show off. However, the use of black and white in Schindler's List successfully recalls this period in history, while symbolizing the loss of hope and humanity that took place. Spielberg also takes this opportunity to use color to highlight certain key scenes and symbols in the film, the most obvious being the girl in the red coat. Spielberg said the scene was intended to symbolize how members of the highest levels of government in the United States knew the Holocaust was happening, yet did nothing to stop it. It was as obvious as a little girl wearing a red coat, walking down the street. Let's go, please. To Schindler, she's the embodiment of life and innocence. It's color in a dark, cruel world. There's a saying that's misattributed to Joseph Stalin that says, One death is a tragedy. One million deaths is a statistic. While this seems like a cold message to take home, Spielberg understood that the only way to hammer home the terrors of the Holocaust would be to boil the atrocities down to individuals, and in this case, a little girl full of color, full of life. Hello. While Oscar Schindler starts out as a greedy war profiteer, perhaps the ultimate turning point to become a man willing to sacrifice his fortune in favor of life is when we see the girl again. Her dead body piled with the other corpses serves as a strong reminder of the industrial machine that was the Holocaust. To them, she's just another number, but to Schindler and to the audience, her death symbolizes the end of hope and innocence. Oscar Schindler serves as a body to move us through the story. It's safe to assume the genocide of millions of people may have been a statistic to him and even perhaps to the viewer at the beginning of the film. But we all start to care, we start to recognize the individual. Schindler and the audience share these similarities, being unable to stand by and see these people killed. There is a personal connection that's established with the victims, and his relationship with his workers parallels the connection the audience makes with them. Spielberg forces us to get to know these people and care for them. 
Schindler wants them to survive, and so do we. Do not bring your There's a scene in the film where Jews are loaded onto train cars and they tell them to leave their luggage as it will follow on a separate train. Of course, the luggage never follows them. The piles of belongings symbolize the millions of lives that were lost, as well as the essence of the victims, who were completely stripped of their identity. Besides heavy symbolism, Spielberg also uses parallel editing to highlight the contrast between the cruelty towards the Jews and the comfort of Schindler and the Nazis. Early in the film, a Jewish family is forced to leave their luxury apartment and forced to move to the ghetto. It could not be better. Another effective use of parallel editing is when Schindler celebrates his birthday in a nightclub, holding a party with the Nazis in the middle of the evil surrounding them. The scene is intercut with Amon Guth, the officer in charge of the Plashow camp, brutally beating his maid Helen in the basement after attempting to seduce her, as well as being split with a wedding taking place at the concentration camp. The contrast between hope and joy of the celebrations and the brutality of Goethe reflects the harshness of the Holocaust, when even during hopeful situations, violence and death were always just around the corner. The use of parallel editing in the film provides a strong contrast between happiness and sadness. A good example of this contrast comes after the evacuation of the ghetto. Soldiers are sent to execute the remaining Jews that may be in hiding, and a soldier begins playing the piano. What is this? Is this Bach? The soldiers are shown as intellectuals, as we could say the film shows what civilized people were capable of doing, and how the German people of poets and thinkers was able to transform into a culture of murderers. The major strength of the film is how subtle it is in the development of its characters and relationships. Oskar Schindler isn't a conventional hero in any sense. He was a drinker, a womanizer, and a con artist. At the beginning of the film, he's a businessman driven by nothing more than greed. There's no indication of hate nor affection toward his Jewish workers, hiring them at starvation wages. The Jews themselves receive nothing. By the end of the film, he ends up broke and wants nothing but for his workers to survive. I could have got more out. I could have got more. I don't know if I just... I could have got more. But his transformation is a slow burn, steadily developing compassion for his workers as he begins to see them as humans deserving of life. Of course, just as in real life, his motives are never explained, but we can understand them better by taking a look at the people closest to Schindler. Itzak Stan serves not only as Schindler's accountant, but also as his conscience. Intelligent and never losing pride in the face of the horrible conditions of the Holocaust, he's able to influence Schindler's morality. He takes advantage of his position in the company to save as many Jews as he can by realizing that the factory can become a haven. Thank you again, Herr Director! Stern's relationship with Oskar Schindler contributes enormously to the decision to save the Jews, and this relationship grows slowly as Stern begins to respect Schindler as his intentions change. I think most people right now have other priorities. The vivid and terrible way the Holocaust is portrayed in the film is laid by Amon Guth, the leader of the concentration camp. Control is power. He represents the evil of the Nazi party. Ironically, he and Schindler share many common traits, such as greed and self-centeredness. The difference between them is Goeth never strays into goodness and denies any connection to an individual. Still, Goeth is a complicated character. He's deeply conflicted since he heavily believes in Nazi ideology and constantly kills Jews for what seems to be his idea of fun. But at the same time, he exhibits strong feelings for Helen, his Jewish maid. When Schindler tells him they can never be together, he replies he would be merciful to Helen by simply shooting her in the head. This twisted idea of a merciful death embodies his character completely, his inner conflict and deeply entrenched cruelty. The film's message is that one man has the power to save lives, to make a difference, even in the face of an evil like the Holocaust. Spielberg depicts this horror while carrying the theme of individualism all the way to the end. The final scene is the second one in the film that is fully colored. Schindler's Jews appear along with their actor counterparts. 
This serves the purpose of showing that these survivors were real and not just fictional characters. The few who were able to triumph over evil. If you're gonna take something home today, it's this. Never let your beliefs get in the way of facts. Human beings have a tendency to forget. As time goes by, the survivors and witnesses of this event slowly fade into the pages of history. Schindler's List is a good reminder of the atrocities that happened not too long ago, demanding that we acknowledge what took place. And to the six million who, who can't be watching this among the one billion watching this telecast tonight. At midnight tonight, the war is over. After six long years of murder, victims are being mourned throughout the world. We've survived. Thank yourselves. Thank your fearless Stern and others among you who worried about you have faced death at every moment. I'm a member of the Nazi party. I'm a munitions manufacturer. I'm a profiteer of slave labor. There will be generations because of what you did. <laughs> I didn't do enough. You did so much.